They, they are dining on the spot. This is all meeting of the city council to be held in the sixth floor conference room, 801 Crawford Street, 5 p.m. Tuesday, October 8, 2013, for the purpose of a public work session. In addition, you may consider a motion to go into closed meeting by order of the mayor. Mr. Cherry? Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Meek? Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Ms. Randall? Here. Mayor Wright? Here. Mr. Roth? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, we have three items tonight, uh, and that includes your council liaison reports. The first is a briefing uh, by the police chief at your last council meeting uh, in response to a non agenda speaker. Excuse me. <clears throat> you ask us to uh, provide a briefing on the crime statistics for the last year for the community that's uh, located around Yorktown Avenue. And as you'll see, uh, this is not a high crime area from uh, the chief's presentation. And so, Ed, if you'll go through this presentation, please. Mayor, council members, good evening. Good chief. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Rose stated uh, the last council meeting a request for crime stats. So we put together a presentation, and the presentation will be based on first one that will come up will be our computer-aided dispatch um, records. This is where somebody calls 911 and reports activity. Um, this is where we dispatch officers out, and officers investigate uh, situations and then determine if the crime has occurred or not. A lot of this is actually officer-initiated activity, directed patrols, car stops, investigating suspicious persons for the area. Um, just to come down the numbers real quick, Warrant court papers where we attempted to serve warrants, 22 incidents were reported out in that area. Suspicious persons, 24. See complaint for a citizen, there's eight. <coughs> Loud party, nuisance, nine. Domestic disputes, 10. Directed patrols, 58. Could you explain what that is, Chief? Directed patrols? Mm -hmm. uh, that's where officers, through our uh, assignments, have gone out there and either gotten out of the car or patrolled the area looking for suspicious activity. Um, it's actually more proactive rather than response. It's officer-initiated, not, officer not consumer-initiated. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have a prostitution um, code in our CAD system or dispatch system. Therefore, there could have been reports of prostitution which could have came out of suspicious persons who are a public nuisance. So there may have been reports of prostitution out there, but it's, um, we don't have a specific code for that. We'll bring that up. When we took a look at our crime statistics um, with our records management system, we put up a 100-yard uh, boundary to catch the whole area around Jamestown, Yorktown area. And that's what we'll be uh, taking a look at here. And as you can see, um, the activity here is on Yorktown and County Street through our GIS. That's where it's mapping majority of the crimes, which I believe is the 2000 block of um, County Street in that area. Based on the information, there are three part one crimes. Part one crimes for this presentation are violent crimes, and part two crimes are property crimes. And there's a total of 10 property crimes that were reported for the period of September 26, 2012 through September 26, 2013. Can you make that relative to what are you, the city Old at Town large, or the Sterling the Point, or the city at large? The city yeah. at large. Yeah. That that would uh, that would give us something. We to have our focus on four initiative, which is where where we are really looking for the hot spots and deploying personnel out in those areas. This area has not even come close to being brought up into the focus on four area. It, it, it is not a hot spot, as I said. It's my, so far below the median, it doesn't correct. correct. Yeah, it doesn't statistically. Exactly. Okay. Wouldn't register. Um, on the violent crime side, the three crimes that were reported, the first one is a shooting into an occupied dwelling. There was one robbery reported and one brandishing of a firearm. And that building is the uh, social services building. And the shot came from uh, the west. Um, <coughs> might have been an act of vandalism, we don't know, but it's still dangerous. 
property crimes, two motor vehicle thefts that occurred, one larceny of motor vehicle parts, one larceny from motor vehicle, uh, one larceny, all others, and then there's been five residential burglaries. Uh, the residential burglaries were uh, being investigated through our neighborhood impact officer as well as criminal investigations. And in fact, we're currently still working on that one area of County Street, which is where I showed you the uh, hot spot showing up for this general area. Is there any questions as far as crime stuff? So the worst thing you get in that area are those burglaries. Residential burglaries, and as I've reported out with the chief's report, we've been um, had an increase in 2013 in residential burglaries throughout the area. We've actually had five major targets. This area does not fall into the major target areas that we were addressing for residential burglaries, um, but we are monitoring this. Uh, we had a couple of issues on County Street. Uh, there was a narcotic search warrant that was executed. We've had some neighbor disputes out there that we're investigating, so we've been dealing with those situations. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, we have this perception with the high school being in close proximity and those young people walk through many of the communities, there are times when you do find right many people standing a lottery in certain spots over uh, across the street from them. And I imagine that gives us feeling of insecurity because many of our students are crossing through backwards and forward in transporting, moving through there. I think it bears really looking at. With having the school there, you have the school resource officer who patrols the outside of the schools and does go into the neighborhood at um, into the school day times and, and what have you to deal with those types of situations. You also have an increased police presence as far as sporting events goes. And again, when those events let out, there is traffic that goes over into that okay, neighborhood. Good. So we have increased police presence there. And you also have the school speed limit um, right there on High Street in front of Norcom, which has increased enforcement from both the police department and the sheriff's office out there as well. So I did want to bring the uh, High Street statistics into this because you would see a whole bunch of okay. officer-initiated activity. And I wanted to keep that what's occurring actually in a residential area. Mm -hmm. And that's primarily uh, people violating the speed limit. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. In a school zone. Um, second part of this presentation, I'm going to turn it over to Fred Brusso to provide some information as far as uh, hiding spots and some activity that's occurring out there. Thank you, Chief. Mayor? Yes, sir. Council, uh, good evening. We looked at this with the police officers as well when we're looking with the ideas of the prostitution, the burglaries. Maybe we had hiding spots, yeah. uh, places where individuals could either hide themselves, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. merchandise, or the, or the things that they had taken themselves. And so we actually looked at the alley here from Yorktown going halfway through the block, the alley that went uh, here uh, between County and, 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 and uh, King. King. King and then the area around Oasis, we felt like that was really overgrown uh, areas that could hide, uh, provide hiding spots. Fred, yes, sir. Uh, to get you oriented, Social Services Building Health Department, uh, Oasis is down here. Uh, Norcom is off the map. Thanks, sir. This is the first alley I pointed to, and this is what we saw that said, hmm, good hiding spot for as, as Councilperson Randall said for people walking through the feeling of uh, insecurity Security. things like that so we actually came through and then with the assistance of the Sheriff's Department this is what you have today uh, yeah we think that's a major yes. way of saying okay we took the hiding spots away mm -hmm. did the same thing in that next alley and you can see what we actually had was a fence here that had uh, a lot of brush, trees, things that occurred <coughs> in the fence itself. We said, let's pull the fence up, get rid of the trees, get rid of the underbrush, all of that stuff that was there that provided a good hiding spot, get rid of it, and then we can have a, a, a lack of hiding spots. Around Oasis, you can see how that was cleaned up. Uh, actually, during this cleanup, a number of backpacks and bed rolls and whatever were found and cleaned out. But the idea was make it look like the park setting, have it look good. Disney World uses the same idea, keep it clean, keep it cleaned up, and it, it moves ahead. 
Actually, there's a railroad right away that's uh, back, back behind here, runs on an angle. And so the Sheriff's Department cleaned uh, a good portion of that. They did a good job. They did do a good job. Good. Finally, uh, this is the building at 601 uh, Jamestown. Actually, while we were making, I guess you would say, our rounds looking at the neighborhood, individuals were routinely coming in and out of this building. It was open, uh, it's, and, and when you went in, you could see there were a lot of activities going on in the building. This was September 30th, October 2nd, and today it's the breeze gone, it's removed. So we've removed, again, another hiding spot from the area. There are a lot of houses in the area that look very well, very well maintained, but these few Amazing. things we felt made the difference of improving the neighborhood and, and, and making it um, uh, a safer, appealing, and appearing neighborhood than, than just one. Uh, as the people walk through, now they can see what's around the corner. It looks good. Chief? How about the fences? Uh, uh, that were in a couple of the pictures, uh, uh, or the, whose property are they on? We've issued violation notices to the property owners for those fences okay. to either remove or repair them. Okay. Uh, so we are taking an active role. There are also, if I may say, three homes owned by the uh, 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 Commonwealth of Virginia as part of the Martin Luther King expansion that are being demolished. Uh, they have recently taken three down and there are three remaining. So we're working with them to get those uh, extra spots removed. Very okay. good. Good job. So in conclusion, uh, we don't consider this area as a high crime area. It's not a hot spot. It hasn't been one of our targets in our focus on four efforts. Um, but there are some issues that we deal with, disorder issues primarily, which is handled by the neighborhood impact officer from community policing, as well as a school resource officer for the school activity of the uh, juveniles going through there. There's some minor homeless activity, not a whole lot um, that I've observed or heard about. So the um, majority of it is just the population from the school that's going across through that area. And then we patrol it at nighttime as well. Um, enforcement activity, the school resource officers out there at the high school, the sporting events bring in increased police presence out there. The school speed limit or speed zone out <coughs> on the high street, there's traffic enforcement both by the police department and the sheriff's office. We have directed patrols throughout the uh, police department, uniform patrol, um, community policing, canine, special operations personnel, traffic. Um, we've done numerous prostitution sweeps and narcotics investigations, and I believe the last prostitution sweep we just did last week, we sent the information to council members that we worked this area and did not locate anybody out in that um, area. We did make four arrests in other locations. Um, the removal of vacant structures, com continued maintenance of the alleyways will provide additional lighting. The new behavioral health facility will also bring additional lighting to the neighborhood. It will also bring more activity as far as more eyes to report suspicious activity if it's occurring out there. And all this coincide will uh, deter crime and the disorder activity that's currently being experienced out there right now. So we're looking at this from a positive. I know the first night after we had the two non-agenda speakers come in and talk about this area, I talked to them downstairs in the parking garage for, for about 45 minutes. And then I actually went out to the neighborhood and sat out there for about an hour and a half. And it is prior to getting all the uh, alleyways cleared out and, and the vegetation cut back. It is a very dark area. Probably could use some more lighting. So we're yeah. going to take a look at that as well as to increase the lighting out there at nighttime to again make this to deter criminal activity from occurring in the first place. That's good. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that a good report? Absolutely. Yes, it was. Nothing like the facts. Yeah, better. Isn't that a good combination? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's my son. <laughs> Make you want to stand up and salute. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, but he gets uh, your Susan attention. March. <laughs> yes, I'll yes, tell him he gets your attention. <laughs> He's a great son, too. <laughs> you asked that we prepare a resolution pertaining to the tunnel closures uh, at your meeting last night, and we've done this. This is uh, before you in draft. Uh, it has been a work of many people. We tried to incorporate all aspects of your concerns and the community's concerns. And it's our recommendation that you put this on your regular agenda as a council-submitted item. 
give you a moment to look at it. Uh, Brian's going to pass out the next. Who needs a copy? <coughs> This coincides a lot with uh, what you've written uh, yes, sir. previously. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, and Sherry is ready to launch in the morning with a letter that uh, uh, will take this to the governor. And Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question? This, sure. This all is relative to the eastbound tube and what's happening now. Don't That's we correct. want it to be relative to well, the other direction, too? Mm -hmm. we, we do. But we hope if we can fix it one time, it'll be imprinted in their genetic okay. makeup that okay. we don't have to. It'll be bi-directional no matter what. Right. Matter yeah. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't matter at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good job. To, to try to economize and keep it to one page. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So if we got these folks working for both ends, and I told you last night the governor said yes, they was going to get a hold of the secretary. And then Aubrey Lane in the CTB said they were going to get a hold of the secretary. So let's see how many of them actually get a hold of the secretary. <laughs> yes. I want to share with you, too, the letter that yeah, uh, we'll tra transmit this to the governor's office. So we'll pass that out um, as soon as we make copies. How about uh, the joint letter from our uh, General Assembly delegation? Um, John, is that coming along? <laughs> That's so a very good coming. question. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll initiate that draft. Um, yeah. It's not coming along today. We'll get, we'll get that okay. done tomorrow. Okay. Hmm? Were you busy? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little okay. bit. Okay. It's okay. It's agreeable to put this on the agenda for you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, the next item uh, Council Liaison Reports. Does anybody have any any items? I text and I understand Bishop you read the text yes. last night. Actually it was it was interesting. There was uh, probably about twenty five or thirty mayors or county uh, chairmen there and uh, the governor spent quite a bit of time talking to each and every one of us and uh, um, he actually engaged in the conversation on the tunnel. He understood that we were upset. He let me know that there was no heart feelings, but because it was the busiest two-lane highway and tunnel and this side of the east coast and they had to do something and, and we agreed to disagree but uh, when I brought up the issue about the tunnel closures and the westbound tube and I mentioned a couple of the businesses that uh, I think supported you sir and I mentioned Roger Brown and, and his 40 or 37 percent uh, impact and the the the, the 50 percent brunch that uh, Charles Greenhood had mentioned and and that's when he flagged over the chief of staff now whether that was a diversion to get rid of the mayor <laughs> because you had all the other guys with no problems but but he actually stood there and listened as we talked with the chief of staff and so I've got his number so we might want to follow up next week with him about our okay. conversation just to see but uh, okay anything else all right, is there a motion for close? Okay. Come on, take us in the close. I move to go into a closed meeting pursuant to the provisions of Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711 for the following purposes. Discussion of plans related to the security of the city compound is permitted under subsection A-19. Consultation with legal counsel and briefing by staff concerning a contract where open meeting, consultation, or briefing would adversely affect the city's negotiating posture as permitted under subsection A7. Consultation with legal counsel pertaining to three matters of actual litigation as permitted under subsection A7, and consideration of appointments to boards and commissions as permitted under subsection A1. I'll check in. I can Mr. Cherry? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Meeks? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Ms. Randall? Yes. Mayor Wright? Yes, ma'am. We're enclosed. Thank you. Okay.